All right, we've gone over the basics of how we label the parts of a non-right triangle. Uh, we've done the law of sines. Now we're going to talk about the law of cosines. And again, in a future video, will be a self quiz you can try yourself. Now again, we're looking at acute triangles here or obtuse triangles. Right triangles is a different way to find the missing parts, the angles and the sides of a triangle, and that's called solving a triangle. But we're going to be focusing on these kinds of triangles, non-right triangles. Now, previous video, we talked about the law of sines, which is a ratio of angles and their opposite sides, and you can find some missing parts that way. And now we're going to be focusing on what's called the law of cosines. All right. Now I explained kind of the patterns here of taking one of the three sides of the triangle and putting it in this formula and notice that the cosine of that angle is at the end. So if you have side A in this formula version, you're going to have cosine A at the end. And that's the pattern and, and one way to remember it so you don't particularly have to memorize it. Now we're going to be using this law of cosines whenever you're given a side and another side and the included angle. That's called side angle side. Now in some cases maybe only you're given the three side lengths of the triangle. In order to start figuring out what those angles are it's going to take two steps but we'll be using the law of cosines. Now I'm going to show you two examples of how to use the law of cosines. In this first one, number nine, it's side angle side. You're given this side here 22.5 yards and you're given this side here 11.6 yards and you're also given this included angle angle B alright now let's go ahead and see how we're gonna set this up this is gonna be called side A okay lowercase a because it's opposite angle A this is gonna be called C because it's opposite angle C down there and that's what we're gonna be finding actually and this side here is opposite angle B, so we're going to call it lowercase b. And the reason why that's important is because that's what we're going to use in our law of cosines. Now since it's side angle side, we are missing this angle or this side B here. We have to find that first with the law of cosines. So let's go ahead and write this out. So B squared equals A squared plus C squared and remember the rest of the formula it's minus 2ac and then we're going to repeat b but it's going to be the cosine of the angle cosine b alright we do have to know angle b because we have to find the cosine value of that now let's go ahead and plug that in so 22.5 squared or a squared would be that c squared would be that and it says minus 2ac, so minus 2 times a times c, okay? Now this negative number here is the cosine of 122.2 degrees, that angle right there. All right, notice how, yes, sometimes the sine or the cosine value might be negative. So these two numbers added together gives me 640.81. And then remember, it's subtracting, but all of this multiplication here gives me a negative amount, so we are subtracting a negative 278.1738. Now, I know it looks pretty complicated, and you really have to be dependent on your calculator quite a bit. you got to do it accurately. And by the way, while I'm showing you this, you should try this on your calculator and make sure that you're doing the right keystrokes. But notice how this gives us a B squared value b squared equals 918 point that decimal right there and notice I'm carrying through to four digits most of the time until I round my final answer that's what b squared is so let's go ahead and take the square root of both sides so b equals 30.3 now that's the missing third side so we use the cosine, law of cosines to find a missing third side, and then we put that together in the law of sines to finish. We're looking for angle C, so this is the ratio set we're going to use. We're going to say sine of angle B, because we do know that angle, over the side length of B, which we just found is 30.3, equals, now let's use the C's here, sine C over C. Alright, let's go ahead and plug those values in. 
Now our proportion looks like this. And the sine of 122.2 degrees is 0.8462, so that goes there. And this is the length of side B and the length of side C. Now we're going to cross multiply and get a value for sine C. And that's 0 0.3240, that's rounded. Notice that that's these two numbers multiplied, divided by the third number, cross multiplication. All right, now I'm going to take the inverse sign of that value. And on your calculator, it will look like this. Plunge in the value there, 0 0.3240. And look for the sine minus 1 function. If you don't find it, look for a shift or a second function key. And that will be the inverse sine, which is the angle value, 18.9. All right, now that's a lot of work, a lot of calculations, but remember we did the law of cosines to find the missing third side, and then we use that for the law of sines to find the missing angle, 18.9 degrees. Now let's look at example 10 here in this video. We're going to find measure of angle A, all right, but we are not given any other angles. We're given side, side, side. So law of cosines will help us determine that. If we're looking for the measure of angle A, let's go ahead and use side A, which is this 18 here, first. So A squared equals, do you remember what the rest of the formula is? B squared plus C squared minus 2BC. Remember, you keep those same variables going. And then at the end, it's going to be cosine angle A. All right, A squared at the beginning and cosine A at the end. All right. A squared, do we know what that is? Yes, we do, that's 18 squared. Here are the rest of the numbers plugged in, as you can see. Now let's complete the calculations. So I've carried through all the multiplication here. I notice that here I have 324 equals 1060 comes from adding these two numbers, but I still do have to subtract that expression right there. Now, there's a little clue here that 324 is a small number and 1060 on the other side is a large number. So I'm going to go ahead and leave 1060 there and I'm going to subtract 324 from each side, which looks like this. And then I'm going to add this expression to both sides. So effectively, I've moved this cosine expression to the left side and it has become positive. Now it looks like this. 1056 cosine A equals 736. All right, keep hanging in there with me. We have a few more steps. We're going to divide each side by 1056. And that will give us a decimal value for the cosine A. will be 0.6969 and it actually keeps repeating. So we have to find the inverse cosine of that decimal value. Okay, And after a long series of steps, we are almost done. So plug in the decimal value, 0.6969, and look for the uh, cosine minus 1, or the inverse cosine. If you don't see it, click on the shift or the inverse button. There it is. And that gives us the angle that creates that value, which is 45.8. All right, that is my final answer. So again, if you're only given three sides, you still use the law of cosines, and you can focus on the missing angle that you're looking for, and you can use the law of sines after that to find the other missing angles if that's what you're asked. All right, well, thanks for hanging in there with this video. And those are just two examples here. You have to have a pretty good uh, fast fingers on your calculator and keep track of what you're doing. Thanks for watching this video, and you, the next video is a problem set for you to try some practice problems.